Lord Palmerston. Now, he was the man with the most definite eye for the ladies. He had a long affair with Lady Jersey as a young man. I'll just tell you two or three things about him before I get on to his marriage. In his 50s, when he was Foreign Secretary, he visited Queen Victoria at Windsor Castle and stayed the night. Very, no, very late indeed, in the evening, in fact it was into the night, he entered the bedroom of one of Queen Victoria's ladies-in-waiting. She created blue murder and uh, threw him out and accounts varied between inappropriate behaviour at the least and attempted rape at the worst of anything in between. Palmerston said afterwards, and this is very probably true, he mistook the door, he meant, it, he meant to visit another lady <laughs> who, who we had good reason to believe was expecting his visit and would not be at all disappointed. Queen Victoria, to coin a phrase, was most definitely not amused. Uh, she, strong, she already disliked Palmerston, and she disliked him even more after that. Queen Victoria's three, I, I was going to say least liked, but most strongly disliked Prime Ministers, Gladstone out in front by a mile was her least favourite Prime Minister, Palmerston second, and Lord John Russell third. All of them liberals, by the way, but don't draw any conclusions from that. <laughs> um, her most favourite Prime Minister was Benjamin Disraeli, and Queen Victoria once sent him a Valentine's card. When, Vic when Disraeli was dying, Queen Victoria wanted to visit him, just three or four weeks before he died, and uh, it was put to Disraeli that the Queen would like to see him, and Disraeli said, better not, she'd only want me to take a message to Albert. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Lord Palmerston. Now, he lived at Broadlands in Hampshire. It's the house uh, that has been owned by Lord Louis Mountbatten, and the house that our present Queen spent her wedding night at, the first night of her honeymoon in 1952. Now, my wife and I um, met somebody who lived in the village of Broadlands, and she told us it was very, very well known in the village. There's a number of young ladies, many of whom had worked at the house for Lord Palmerston, had given birth to children as single mothers, and had been given a satisfactory pension, Lord Palmerston being the father. Now, I'll talk about his, his marriage next. He had a very, very long-running affair with Lady Kelper. I'm talking about getting on for 25 years. Lady Kelper was the sister of Lord Melbourne, the former Prime Minister, and she had a very unhappy marriage. She was married at 18 to Lord Kelper, and she had um, five children. It's very widely assumed that the youngest, uh, Palmerston, was the biological father. So they had this affair for 25 years. Neither of them was, was faithful to the other, but it's a very long-running affair for getting on for 25 years. Eventually, Lord Calper died. They left it for a, a year, for the sake of uh, appearances, and then they married. Palmerston was 55, and uh, Lady Calper was then uh, 52. Neither of them was faithful to the other after that, but um, it was a very happy marriage indeed, and just a few outside affairs. At the age of 78, Palmerston was named as correspondent in a divorce case. It was, and that would have, if the petition had succeeded, that would have ended his career. But he was 78 at the time. Affairs were tolerated, but divorce wasn't tolerated. It was almost, it was very probably blackmail. The, uh, the husband who brought the petition was a scurrilous journalist, and he, it's thought that he hoped to be brought, bought off. Palmerston denied it totally, and his defence succeeded. The uh, divorce petition uh, did not succeed. Now, interest, oh, just before I move on, um, Dis Disraeli said it was a great tragedy that the uh, account of it had got out, because it would make Palmerston even more popular than he already was, and it'd sweep the country at the next election, which did actually happen. Now, the, um, the lady in question was Mrs. Kane, and a joke 
Edinburgh found the country, she was Cain, but was he able? <laughs> he was 78 at the time. Now I move on to his, uh, to his death. He died at Rocket Hall in uh, Hertfordshire, which was the home, had been the home of Lord Melbourne, Lady, Cast Lady Cowper's, let's put her portrait up, Lady Cowper's uh, brother, and it came into Palmerston's family through that route. Now, Palmerston, as I said just a little earlier, um, died one day short of his 81st birthday, and that was three months after increasing his majority at a general election. He was believed to be extremely fit, and it's certainly true that a fortnight before he died, he vaulted over a five-bar gate. So, I know I'm speaking to the U3A, I expect most of you are retired, but, you know, get back to work. He, he was Prime Minister to the day he died, um, one day short of his 81st birthday. There's two versions of his death, and there's two versions of his um, last words. The official version is that he was sitting up, he had a short illness at Brockett Hall, He's, he was sitting up in bed and his last words were, he was working on a treaty, that's dealt with clause 88, let's move on to clause 89. That's the official version. The unofficial version was that, now French pronunciation is not my uh, strong point, can somebody help me, on flagrante. Is that the word for <laughs> sexual intercourse in inappropriate conditions? Anybody French speaking? No, no. Oh, well, I'll, I'll put it in English then. He was uh, in an in a uncompromising uh, position with a ser young serving girl over the billiard table. That was the unofficial version. <laughs> and the lady my wife and I met from the Broadlands area swore that that was true. Now, the other version of his... Uh, 